Welcome back to the Diaspora channel where we showcase businesses and people that you can connect with on the continent or in the diaspora. And tonight live is sponsored by Maison Mocha and I'm your host Kai Gabiam. I hope you guys are doing well and kindly, kindly thumbs up the stream and if it's your first time here, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I go live or upload a new video. And those of you that are familiar with this platform, you know it's all about sharing great news with you guys and opportunities on the ground. So you can know everything that is happening on the motherland. So that's why I am so happy to have uh, our guests they are all the way from Ghana. So those of you that are so passionate about knowing what is happening on the Ghana, uh, you know, on Ghana, or uh, simply, you know, in Ghana, or simply you just want to know, you know, how you can connect, who you can connect with, this is just the right, the right, the right people to connect with because they are in Ghana and they are the one actually moving things around in the community so that's what we want to see brothers and sisters that are on the continent doing great thing to bring the change we are all waiting for so very soon i will be adding i will be adding them and the founder is actually uh, amuzu amuzu kumaho so amuzu um is a farmer uh, um, and then he's the ceo of a uh, a non-profit pan-African organization registered in Ghana called Power to Our Women, uh, our Mother's Foundation Africa. So for now, they're only, you know, operating in Ghana, but this project is going to expand all over Africa. So uh, that's why I'm so, so excited to have them on tonight. So they work with um, mothers and, uh, and girls so to empower themselves on multiple levels their organization largest project is the building of a multi-purpose progressive and maternal driven village in greater uh, Accra region of ghana the village aimed to address a number of issues concerning the empowerment of women and ensuring food security through organic farming. The organization also seeks to empower the nation by facilitating and accommodating those in the Ghanaian and African diaspora who wish, uh, who wish sorry, to relocate and settle in Ghana. So that's why this stream is another interesting, very, very important stream. And I'm sure you don't want to only hear the great information for yourself, but it's also very important that you share this stream so other brothers and sisters can also join us and hear what this great foundation, uh, foundation is all about. So kindly thumbs up the stream and share this stream, please. Euh, bonsoir tout le monde et bienvenue sur euh, Diaspora Channel. J'espère que vous allez bien. Moi, je vais super bien. Je suis Kai Gaviam et comme vous le savez, je mets en avant nos business, que ce soit ici, dans la diaspora ou sur le continent, sur euh, cette euh, plateforme. Donc, si vous voulez aussi me joindre ici et partager ce que vous faites, nous montrer vos produits ou partager les services que vous offrez, envoyez-moi un mail sur euh, the diaspora channel arrobas gmail.com et vous serez en mesure de nous joindre ici. Et ce soir, euh, on a euh, Amuzu Kumaho et Na Amali. Donc Amuzu, il est le fondateur de cette ONG dont on va parler ce soir, Power to Our Mothers um, Foundation Africa. So right now, euh, à ce moment, ils sont seulement au Ghana, mais ils seront aussi dans d'autres pays africains. Donc, ils vont partager avec nous comment euh, ils ont commencé cette euh, ONG et comment ils utilisent cette, euh, cette ONG pour euh, euh, participer au développement des jeunes filles et des femmes au Ghana. Et pour ceux d'entre vous qui veulent euh, aller vous installer au Ghana, par exemple, ils vont partager leur projet concernant la construction euh, de logements pour les locaux. 
et aussi pour nos frères de la diaspora qui veulent aller au Ghana et s'installer là-bas. Donc, euh, ils sont aussi, euh, comme euh, il a aussi euh, des fermes, les fermes euh, agri-pastorales. Donc, il va nous euh, parler plus en détail de tout ça. Donc, euh, likez ce live et partagez. Le live de ce soir euh, est sponsorisé par euh, Maison Moka. Donc, si vous voulez euh, voir exactement les, les produits qu'ils ont sur le site, ces bracelets sont sur leur site. Maintenant, vous pouvez aussi visiter leur site et voir d'autres produits. Donc, et si vous voulez aussi que je montre vos produits, simplement envoyez-moi vos produits et je serai en mesure de partager ça avec nos amis qui sont ici avec nous sur dans le live maintenant. Donc, je vais bientôt ajouter nos invités de ce soir. Donc, juste, juste un, un, un instant. Et comme on le dit, si vous êtes en Afrique et vous faites quelque chose vraiment pour aider nos frères et sœurs qui sont en Afrique, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît, on veut savoir ce que vous faites et comment votre histoire peut aussi nous inspirer tous à participer au changement de notre cher, cher, cher continent. Donc, si vous voulez aussi me joindre ici et partager ce que vous faites avec nous, simplement envoyez-moi euh, un mail et vous serez en mesure de me joindre ici. I will be adding Amuzu now. I can see him in the background. Hey Amuzu, can you hear me? I can see now as well. Amuzu, yes. You're good now. You unmute yourself, so you're good. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, I can hear you very loud and clear. Awesome, I awesome, hope awesome. Can, I hope you can also hear me loud and clear. Yes, I can hear you clearly. How are you doing, sir? I'm great. I'm doing fine. Awesome. So, you know, you are the CEO of uh, the founder of uh, Power to Our Women Foundation and you are based in Africa, spe uh, specifically in Ghana for now. <laughs> so uh, it's so good to have you here tonight. Please introduce yourself to our viewers and give us a little bit of background information about yourself and how you started this foundation. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would want to say Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my experience and whatever we are doing here. Um, point of correction, it's not power to the women. When okay. We, it's power to our mothers. Oh, our to our mothers, mothers. sorry. <laughs> power to, power our, to mothers. our mothers. Yeah. Yes. I'm not the founder. I'm one of the founding members of Power to Our Mothers Foundation Africa. Right. Um, I'm the last born of nine. Um, I come from the Volta region in Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a life coach. Um, I'm also a farmer, a politician, but not okay. the everyday type of politician. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm only biased. I'm doing politics for our mothers, the women. Oh, okay. So, Interesting. Yes, it's, 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 it's everything is our mothers. And in this world, I would say that um, the only thing that um, is missing is the mm -hmm. maternal energy that is missing. So right. we need it. Uh, and the world now, like any other, um, all of us, when we're mm -hmm. growing up, um, anytime we're sick, uh, the only person we, we, we fall to is our mothers. Mm -hmm. And before we even know it, um, our mothers knows that we are sick. So, and this organization, it's all about for our mothers. And as we find ourselves in 2021, from last year till now, the mm. world is sick. The world is sick of coronavirus. And this is the time that we have to rely, rely on our mothers, the mm. women. Because like I said earlier on, when we are sick, when we, the best first doctor we ever know is our mothers. Mm. The first teacher we ever know is our mothers. The mm -hmm. first chef we ever know is our mothers. Everything, mm -hmm. our first, everything, our first God, our everything. 
So, and um, this, the little that I have to say, Power to Our Mothers Foundation is non-profit. And I would say it's not like any other foundation. This is driven by passion mm. from people from various um, worlds of life, from different homes, different backgrounds that right. came together to form this organization. Great, great, great to know. I, I'm sure we have uh, our next guest right now here with us. So let me add now. Hey, Sister Now, how are you? Can you uh, unmute yourself, please? I'm well, thanks, Sister Kai. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. <laughs> so good to have you here. Please uh, go ahead and introduce uh, yourself to our viewers and tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay, thank you so much for uh, having me on the platform, uh, this fantastic uh, platform, the Diaspora Channel. Uh, you're doing amazing work, sister. Um, my name is Na Naamele Asante Amar. I was born and bred in the UK to Ghanaian parents. And uh, recently, the last four months, we located to, uh, to Ghana, where I am now. Yeah. I am a mother of two very uh, lovely and energetic boys. I am a UK employment lawyer by profession um, and also uh, an intuitive life coach, uh, working with the African diaspora and women who are aspiring leaders. Mm. Uh, I'm also a politician and um, uh, an independent aspirant to be president of uh, Ghana. Um, wow. And one of, the, one of the founding members of Power to Our Mothers Foundation Africa. Beautiful, beautiful. So um, Amuzu just uh, clarified the fact that, you know, he's what, you know, uh, he's not like the sole founder of uh, Power to Our Mothers. So uh, I just want to know where now, you know, where you come in and what exactly you do, you know, with uh, the foundation, since it's a foundation that is there, you know, the, the, the for the girls, for the women. And I like the fact that you are also part of this foundation because you are a woman and, you, you know, there are certain things our men do know, but we need, you know, the women to do some of the talking, you know, whilst the men are doing some of the hard work in the background. So share with us exactly what you do, you know, you, you do with uh, mad, uh, Power to our, uh, our Mothers. Okay. So um, Power to Our Mothers Foundation, um, whilst we have our CEO, Amuzu, mm. and some other members, it's actually a majority uh uh, mother focused so even the, right. the those who are active in the organization the majority are the mothers the women and mm. you'll no, you'll notice that uh, when Amuzu and myself speak we usually speak mm. of our mothers first because a key part um and mission and aim of the foundation uh, mm. is to is to reposition the 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 value of the mother in the mm. high place that it should have been because we mm. you know we have lost a lot of respect for and appreciation for the things that the mother does. This is not to mm. the exclusion of our fathers, but as Muzu was saying earlier, what we see mm. in the world is this huge imbalance of uh, our male and feminine energies, and really mm. the huge imbalance of the, the mother at the decision-making table from mm. you know, corporate to personal and everything else. So the main focus is um, helping the mothers and mother figures, women and girls, empower themselves in different ways. Uh, politically, as I said mm. myself, I'm aspiring to be president of the co country, but really as a means also to encourage other women to come mm. together because one woman can't do it by herself. We need like That's a right. collective of mothers to, mm -hmm. to nurture, to nurture the citizens. So we mm. need the mothers to take care. As I say, we need the mothers to take care of the country the same way they take mm. care of their home. Um, so uh, we, we run um, different, we have different initiatives. Uh, you mentioned okay. already the, the largest project, which is the building the Power to Our Mothers Foundation village in the greater mm. Accra region. 
And this is to um, address a number of different uh, issues uh, and to seek to emp empower not only the mothers and the mother figures, mm. but also mm. the mother land. So mm. we've already heard mention of the importance of farming our land, owning, you know, owning the control of our food, because mm -hmm. um, our food, when we remember our, our heritage, our roots, our ancestors, food was our medicine. And we've moved mm -hmm. so far away from that now. So it's getting back to the position where we control the food mm -hmm. so that we can ensure that it's, it's safe, it's nutritious and everything else. So that's one mm -hmm. aspect. Another aspect is also to, um, to uh, train. So to enable women to <coughs> excuse me, um, learn, acquire, develop various skills that they have that perhaps mm -hmm. they, can't actually, they can't actually use uh, at mm. the moment because their main focus and what they're, a what they're able to do is, for instance, just look after their family, their, their children, mm. if they have a partner, the partner. So mm. to enable them to learn things for, you know, for them to do something for them, for themselves, you know, mm. as an individual, not just as a mother, not just as a wife. Um, and as you like mentioned that. before, um, creating a space. So the village mm. is to also empower the motherland by welcoming home to the motherland uh, her children. So our brothers mm. and sisters in the diaspora and mm. the specific intention is for them to come and live amongst their own, to live amongst their brothers and sisters, not on a colony of diasporans, but to live like amongst that. their brothers and sisters <laughs> as if they are the same, because we are one people. So yes. the diasporans like myself, we come home we have our unique perspective, skills, um, things. We have that to contribute to uh, home, mm. the motherland. And what we need in return is to be reconnected, rebirthed in our heritage and our culture. Mm. So it's like everyone has something to bring to the table. Absolutely. Uh, Thanks so last, much. Well, not the last part. And then there's also just uh, mentoring, uh, coaching uh, mm. women to, to support them to understand, yeah, it's almost to refine themselves because as women, a conversation mm. for another time, but as women, we go through <laughs> so many changes uh, uh, on, uh, in life. You know, we start off with individuals and then mm. maybe you become a wife and then maybe mm -hmm. you become a mother and then mm. the individual kind of disappears into the, into mm. the background. So mm -hmm. how we help them to refine themselves so that as well as giving to their children, to their family, mm -hmm. they're also mm -hmm. giving to and nurturing themselves. Beautiful. Amuzu, you would like to add anything to, uh, you know, the coaching because you also do coach. So what exactly do you, um, how do you coach the women? I know Sister Na is on the side doing what we women do, but what, you know, when it comes to you, what exactly do you, how do you do your coaching with uh, the young uh, girls and the, the, the mothers? I wouldn't say mine is coaching because um, I don't want to use, because um, the only word I can use for it is coaching, but mine, I would say mm. that mm. I, I remind women of who they truly are because most of them has forgotten what they possess inside out. Mm. The strength. So what I do mm -hmm. is tell them or remind them because I speak from the side of the men. So um, anytime I'm reminding a woman of who she is, mm. there are certain questions she feels that it has been indoctrinated in the minds of our mothers. So mm. they ask certain questions be, and I answer them and I remind them of who they are. So basically, my is to just remind them of the mm. power that the professes between the sexes. Because like myself, I represent any man. Likewise, the said woman represents every woman. So I, I speak from that side to make them understand. So that is my way of coaching. I have okay. the unique way of coaching them. I'm not like the everyday type of coach. So... And that's how I, I, the little bits I contribute to that. And like I said, every time I'm giving platforms and it's, I see mothers, mm. women, and especially um, Namele here, 
I our mother now Mele here. I most of the times leave the talking for her to do because it has always been we the men that are doing the talking. So most of the times when she we are on the same platform, <laughs> I I I want her to, I to, to, to be, <laughs> Oh yes. I, I I I make her talk because okay. The world now, as it says, is as is, is we the men that are in control. We are the leaders mm. from our homes, from offices, society, everywhere. So I don't want to continue with the norm because we set power to our mothers. So the norm is um, the men are in charge, but now mm. we want us to have a balance. So that is how come most often when I'm on the same platform with. Our mother Angela, I hardly speak often, so I only add little contributions to it. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about the farming uh, uh, when it comes to what you are doing right now? The farming project. Can you can you tell us more about that? Because I want to know where you are doing. You know this uh, farming. What different things? You are doing just for the viewers also to understand in depth uh, what the uh, power, you know, power to our mothers is about and what you guys are working on right now. Okay. Um, I would say that before um, I really, really tell the story of what we are doing, mm -hmm. I would want to say something about how Power to Our Mothers Foundation operates in a bit in terms of farming and the bigger picture and okay. the startup, the foundation, like mm. any other house or any other organization, the mm. foundation is very, very essential, especially when you are building. So um, the farm is, first of all, I ask myself, what mm. will I eat mm -hmm. to really be a kind of medicine to me, not depending on so much chemical medicines because I myself have been a victim of taking so much chemical drugs, the octodose medicines, that mm -hmm. I almost, almost lost my life. So I decided to go into farming to grow something that um, my mom taught us all, but because of the modern day, mm. going out there chasing for this money and all that. So we eventually mm. begin to eat outside, eat the, like the way we are eating now till my back was against the wall. That is when I was sick. Until that, that is when you would have to come back and mm. find yourself. So what we started, Power to Our Mothers Foundation has been operating on the ground for some years now. And we've been growing. We are doing uh, all sorts of farming, from animal farming. We have the birds. We have the goats. We have the vegetables. And we... So many, so many, all aspects of farming. There are some that we even want to introduce this year. Um, mm. Before, we were planting seasonals because um, when you have to plant all year long, you need um, water. There are certain things that we can plant all year long. So we are working towards that. And with okay. regards to the animals too, we want to be in markets all year long. So what we so, are doing? Uh, is, sorry, Amuzu, when you are saying all year long, can you tell us exactly what you you can grow all year long, so the viewers can understand that? So because not everyone know how you know knows uh, how things work in when it comes to farming. Okay. So I'm sure some people would love to know. Okay. Okay, and um, when I say all year long, it's all year long, what are the things that we have in our food? Every day, there's certain basic things that we eat in our food. We find them in our food, like the pepper, um, the tomatoes, mm. the okra, the veggies, the vegetables. Mm. And yes, that's the all year long because we need that in our food every single day. So, but... Um, you, we all know that tomatoes have its seasons. Mm. So we um, we want to have a system whereby we'll have all year long, whereby we can grow our um, tomatoes and pepper mm. and all the, all the other vegetables that we need in our food. All year long should be accessible in abundance 
mm. organically planted, no chemical. So that's what we I mean by all year long. Excellent, excellent. So the next the next thing I want you to explain more to the viewers because you shared that with me backstage is about the um, village foundation you know the project about building so can we go into that for the viewers to understand how the farm and you know how because and uh, nazi sana mentioned something right at the beginning that is not like a group of diasporian just uh, from diaspora just click somewhere and, you know, create their own corner. And then that say they are in Ghana, but they are not actually mingling with our brothers and sisters in Ghana. But this is more like us being together, embracing one another. That's the vision. So can you explain to us how you're going to be able to achieve uh, that? Okay. Um, thank you very much for this question. Um... What we've realized is the world is really, really, the difference between we on the motherland and our fellow mothers and brothers out at the diaspora is the communication problem. Mm. We all know something and we all lack something. One mm. has one, one has one. But how to merge is really, really a problem, the communication. Mm. Because our lifestyle is different, even the way we eat, the way we cook is different. But there are certain similarities that we can really, really identify mm. to incorporate. So, like I'm saying, um, the foundation village. Okay, let me put this this way. Mm. When we, are, we want a, a, a family or a community whereby you live in a community, whatever mm. you eat, mm -hmm. whatever... You, you drink, you can actually see it. It is not whereby you see the thing on the, on the market, but you don't mm. know how it was grown. Mm -hmm. You buy it, however it was grown, you don't know. So most of the times, it is a problem. And it is very, it's a big, it's a huge problem. I always say that food is what um, our colonial masters used to colonize us because they've changed our taste. So most of the diasporans that I know mm. don't know some how our local food or the food grown on the motherland taste. Exactly. Because, <laughs> yes. So in, an, in, in the nutshell, mm. bringing this um, and the, our brothers and mothers from the diasporans to um, our motherland here is to coexist because some will also have to learn how <laughs> these things are grown. Mm organically mm -hmm. because they've learned about the um, scientific way of growing this GMO, scientific way of growing all these things. Mm -hmm. This community is where you see it, you can actually learn, mm -hmm. you can impact the next generation that is coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the community, um, the village is going mm -hmm. to be a multi-purpose whereby it is going to be driven. I don't know you've heard about the Emoji village. No. Okay. Um, it's a woman village in Kenya, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Oh, it's a, it's Tell a, us a little village. bit about it. I would love to know more about it. Uh, that I'll leave for Angela to say. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was not... say mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, embarrassingly, the, the name of the founder of that village escapes me but it's the Umoja village in uh, Kenya uh, okay. that was originally set up to be um, inhabited by, run by uh, only women. And um, mm. I think um, after, they, after they set it up, perhaps a bit mm. later down the line, they would uh, have a system where, you know, some of the, because some of these women still had partners, so they would have to have a system whereby, you know, the men, the men needed permission, you know, to come and visit with, uh, the, the, the women who were there, but it's the women who uh, maintain the security. They are the ones mm. who, who, like I said, they did everything in the village. And since then, they've had a number of uh, offshoots from, from that mm. where uh, there are some other uh, villages um, where uh, the women actually live with the men, but the men are kind of living 
on mm. my agreement on the terms that are laid down by the women. And um, so far, it seems that things are going, you know, things are going uh, very well. Um, and um, I think it's a it's a good space. You know, some people might say that, well, why be so divisive? But um, what we don't realize is that mm. number one is not, number one as a people, and then number two uh, as the different genders. We are all mm. on a journey of healing, and mm -hmm. so the women have gone through so many atrocities. You know um in life over a period of time the men have mm. their own story so um until to, to get to get to a place that is kind of healthy sometimes you need the spaces that are just for those groups so because mm -hmm. they are there they understand one another so i'm a firm believer that you know women should have their spaces men should have their spaces and then the family Hello, should have its space as well so mm -hmm. i really um i really congratulate them what they've done there and so that is why the Power to Our Mothers Foundation Village is um, focused on mm. the women. We, we haven't talked much about it, but some of the other things that it seeks to address is to um, partner with um, the government and some of the other non-profits uh, perhaps, but to provide accommodation or refuge uh, for women and children who are fleeing mm. some form of domestic or sexual abuse. Mm. Um, uh, some of them who are... Uh, who, who basically they can't house themselves. They're, they're, they're sleeping on the street because, mm. um, yes, everybody, fair enough, uh, people believe that uh, poverty must always be there. But our, mm. our ethos, our belief, our mission is all about, it's actually based on uh, a Ghanaian proverb that we have that says, um, educate a man, you educate an individual. When you educate a woman, you educate a nation. So the yeah. mere fact that somebody helps a woman to empower herself, they've already empowered a whole nation or a generation, you know, mm. and for us, that is the quickest way to uplift the whole country, the whole nation. Um, so that's where, that's where, that's where we are at, at the moment. Yes. Um, it, it, it is to really give them that kind of safe space and make them mm. uh, help them to get in a position where they can then, you know, venture out with their skills under their belt and um, to, to help empower the next generation. The next generation, mm. they, say, they say the children, we, we say the children are the future, but we forget that if the mothers are the first teachers of the, ch of the um, children, how mm -hmm. much of a good future are they gonna have? So that's a good rolling point. It, rolling it back and going to the root. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from Black Mail TV, is it possible to have a farm and build manufacturing for processing as well? Um, okay. I would want to say that there's so much that um, when he said building manufacturing, what are we going to manufacture? Are we going to really process our food into where we can store them? Because I really want to understand um, it's because as it stands now, we are um, there's so man so much productions that we are using our raw materials to do. But at the end of the day, there's certain mm. chemicals we add in this certain these productions mm. that is unhealthy for us. So if it's about how to really, really to preserve our food, mm -hmm. if it is how we are going to preserve our food, that is why we are going to grow organically. Mm. And I won't say that we know it all. I won't say that we are open for. We know that um, we Blacks and uh, we Africans, we've forgotten so much of our potentials because relatively we rely on the our colonial masters um, mm. for everything. So there's so And all we think whatever they bring is the best. And we all yes. think they know it all. All they are saying, all they are doing is the right way to do things. But, you know, thank God we start waking up from our slumber that we have great 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 things our forefathers used to do and they will live 100 plus and they will still be strong walking up and down so it's about time we start going back and using those type uh, you know a uh, type of uh, things or the way that they, you know like you mentioned uh, organic foods now is a big thing you know in the west i'm sure and now we we'll go deeper you know into that but right now with this project, anyone that wants to be part of it, obviously they will be 
knowing 100% what they are eating, where they grow their food. So that's one aspect that I like about, you know, the, the foundation. So um, I think there are just few, uh, a few contributions as well from um, um, uh, Titus. I hope you guys already read that. We say use turmeric yeah. smug on paper. You can know if it's corrosive food by pH, uh, LS. LFS, alkaline based environment food will react with alkaline uh, material for no acid. So I uh, think the next question is, is it possible to form a partnership to sell those organic food to the diaspora? So that's from uh, Blackmail TV. I would say that um, I've had discussions actually with other um, some other Pan-African Pan organizations that are seeking to do exactly that. I mean, when okay. we talk about uh, Pan-Africanism, we're talking about group economics, pooling together our resources and helping our own. So it means that, you know, we make sure that our people are the ones who are first in uh, first access to the market and sell our mm -hmm. things, you know, uh, as fresh as um, as fresh as possible. So, absolutely, I think that is possible. Um, it's just a question of at what stage and you know how to meet the meet the demand. But my mm -hmm. sense is that we would not by no means, and I think that's the right thing, be the only people. This definitely mm -hmm. is the time when more of our brothers and sisters and those and us on the continent are saying yes, we really do need to work together. Let's make, let's make it work some way, mm -hmm. so do for self. Thanks, now, great uh, contribution from House of Bloom, creating a, pro a production line to be able to package and distribute them across uh, other African countries and not relying, uh, relying in exporting out of the continent, so uh, out of the country. So uh, definitely that is another good point right here. With the free trade, we know we can move our goods so easily now. So that's definitely a, a good thing right there that we can all practice. Like, again, something our forefathers, they used to do, exchanging goods, things between, you know, between themselves. So that's uh, another thing we really, really need to learn to do once we trust one another. So how can That's anyone, so, sorry? So, sorry, I just wanted to add one other thing. It went yes, back go to ahead, the, go ahead. And then went, tell us went, how, yeah. yeah it go went ahead. back to the, um, the question that one of the viewers asked about um, manufacturing. And one mm. of the things that um, we plan to do uh, in the mm. village, uh, and they are doing it in places like um, uh, in Kenya, in different places in Kenya, there probably are other uh, countries that are doing it. Uh, and so we should do it ourselves. But when we look at, remember that we are a, a mother focused, a woman girl focused organization, the, mm. the things that we would seek to manufacture are products that are for us. So for instance, our own sanitary products. And so that we are not held, you know, hostage uh, and that our women have to use these products that have, um, you know, really, Toxic, uh, toxic, toxic mm. and natural, and and things are happening. I mean, th th they are happening, but I think it's quite frankly at at every level mm -hmm. we would seek to, we would seek to uh, own and control the, the 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 production of what you know we eat and what we wear. You know, everything that's to do with us. It is to mm -hmm. seek to be able to control that from the start to the beginning. So mm. that's not overnight, but the more <laughs> to we the work end, together yeah. to do that. Mm. Yeah. Great. So, how can people be, you know, be part of uh, uh, power to our mothers? Any listeners right now, you know, or anyone that watch this live later, and you know, they find it very interesting and they want to be part of it. Uh, please go ahead and let us know how, you know, they can be part of uh, what you are doing. Oh, okay. To be part of Power to Our Mother's Foundation is not difficult. You have to send us an email. Because like um, the, we are in the first stage of um, the foundation. We are in the first phase of, of everything. And this phase, phase is the foundation. So we mm. basically would want our foundation to be very, very solid. Okay. So we have various um, things that we could um, discuss. 
looking at us to see how we can everybody we want to accept everybody it's not about the money it's mm -hmm. not about only money sometimes um our intellectual properties uh, is also accepted because i know there are people out there who has so much knowledge in um our organic food and mm. would work, would also welcome them mm. anybody who's ready to share his or her intellectual properties is very very welcomed the person has to send us an email and um, we continue from there when right. it has to be investing because um it's 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 a humanitarian it's non-profit but the mm. the business um, where I say is you are going to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. When you're investing in power to our mothers, you become part of the family that we are talking about. It's like right. our mother. If you're a mother or you're a man, a brother, you are accepted by our mothers because you've invested in your mother and yourself. So investing in, in power to our mothers, it's mm. like first since we are in the first phase, if it is the farm that you are investing in, it's like you are investing in your own food. Trust me, we are controlling everything. Our foundation food, everything we grow, mm. if we are selling to the public, like I said, we want to feed us with organic stuff. The way we cook, mm -hmm. the food we sell out there is really, really bad. I can say the way it's being even cooked is really, really bad. There's so much processed food that we are eating so mm. we have our own it's like we are empowering all aspects we have food vendors mm. so every food everything we grow it is not that we are going to really really um find it difficult to find buyers or it's going to sit in the bush and get to got rotten but no that we have our own people whereby we take everything from the farm goes directly to if it's going to be cooked if it's mm. going to the stops, mm. yes, we have our own thing. We control everything from animals to everything. Because I can't say that, for me, I don't take meat. But because I can't say that I, we all have to take ourselves from meat, no. It's a gradual process. The body mm -hmm. is such a way that it takes time, like a tree, like we, it takes time to grow. So we have to start small, small with time, eating healthy, will mm -hmm. make us um, intuitively, we will discover so many things about ourselves that I, I don't know how to even put it. Anytime I see the future where we've eaten well and we, we, we've realized who we are, mm. I, I, I just can't imagine the things that we, know we, will, we, will, we will be able to do to ourselves and to this world, how beautiful it will be like we used to know that we've forgotten. Mm. So it's easy to get involved, whether it's your intellectual property that you have to give, mm. whether it's monetary, you want to come and farm with us, come and join us, we all farm as one big family, mm. or everything process first. We that are planting have to eat it first. It's like you're cooking in the kitchen. You The cook has to taste it. So mm -hmm. if you're investing, you have to first of all eat. That way you know what you're serving others. You can't say I'm cooking without tasting and I'm going to sell it out there. It's never mm -hmm. possible. So mm -hmm. If you're investing, you're investing in yourself, your food, where you're going to live. Because anybody that invests now in, in the startup, the foundation, automatically will be part of the village, the village, whether you're a man or a woman. Because once you have, there's a special woman in that man's life, Mm -hmm. so, so it's, it's right. a community where we welcome everybody so brilliant that's brilliant is accepted in part of, in part of this foundation including you okay thank you so can you let the viewers know about the location please come again the location of uh, the project the projects are in different mm. parts of the country um we have lands in the Upper East region. Um, we have lands in the Greater Accra, like um, Angela said, uh, Namile said, mm. um, in Lakutari, um, Osudom, that's where we have the land. And that's the first place we started. We started last year growing maize and vegetables. 
And this year we want to already, we have little, little small um, animal farms, which has to do with local birds, not the broilers, do, not those ones. The local birds, the local chicken. Mm. Those are the ones that we are reeling them organically, naturally. So mm. the first phase, we are, there are some things that cannot grow south here that will grow up north. So we have various lands and we are still acquiring more lands through the foundation and other regions. So for now, there's um, three lands that we have in different locations, one at Asuchare, one at Upper East, and one at um, Obuase. Okay. Brilliant. So everyone in the chat, you know, now the different, different locations, you know, these projects, they are uh, working on different uh, locations like they just explained, because obviously some region you can grow some stuff and some other region, you know, in that same region, you can't grow certain things, but maybe go towards the north, you'll be able to grow that. And then you see the fruit, you know, the the, the fruit of it, if proper good like how it's supposed to be so that's why i believe they you know they do different projects at different places but it's so good you know to know what both of you are doing right now in ghana don't uh, uh, I, i'll try and just summarize a little bit you know to our brothers and sisters francophone donc euh, ce que Angela euh, Na et puis euh, Amuzu nous expliquent euh, en fait ce qu'ils font en détail parce que ils ont comme je l'ai mentionné ils ont euh, des fermes agro-pastorales donc euh, ça couvre beaucoup de choses en fait et à part ça ils utilisent ça comme je l'ai dit pour aider et pour participer au développement des jeunes filles et des mamans donc euh, c'est pour ça que leur euh, ONG s'appelle Power to our mothers. Donc, c'est ce qu'ils font. Ils sont là pour aider nos mamans, nos filles à, à, à être plus indépendantes. Donc, si vous aussi vous voulez euh, un jour euh, aller vous installer, par exemple, au Ghana ou bien vous aimez euh, des projets comme celle-ci, ils disent même qu'ils vont euh, construire des logements pour les locaux et les frères et sœurs qui veulent de la diaspora, qui veulent aussi aller s'installer au Ghana. Donc, c'est un projet, vraiment, euh, leur initiative est une initiative vraiment à encourager, à soutenir. Donc, si vous voulez aussi euh, faire part de leur euh, initiative, simplement, il faut leur envoyer un mail. J'ai déjà mis leur email adresse euh, dans, le, dans le chat, donc vous pouvez les contacter en savoir plus. Donc, euh, si c'est votre première fois sur euh, ma chaîne, comme je l'ai dit au, dé au départ, vous aussi, vous pouvez m'envoyer vos produits ou simplement me joindre ici et partager ce que vous faites dans votre communauté avec nous pour nous inspirer à faire de mieux ou que, que ce soit ici dans la diaspora ou sur le continent. Donc, si c'est votre première fois, n'oubliez pas de vous abonner et activer la cloche en fait de ne pas rater mes lives ou mes vidéos. Et surtout, n'oubliez pas de partager mes vidéos aussi. Merci encore d'être avec nous ce soir. C'est vraiment la fin maintenant et bonne soirée à tous. So, sister, now anything you would like to add, you know, any message you want to leave with the viewers before we end the live? Sister Na, you need to unmute yourself. Always happens. Um, <laughs> well, thank you that uh, you've extended the platform to me. Thank you for uh, inviting us. Um, and it was really, um, especially for my brothers and sisters in uh, the diaspora, um, that, um, you know, are thinking, either thinking about relocating to Ghana mm. or Africa or... Mm are just now in a place where they want to, you know, uh, reconnect with their, their, their roots and heritage. Even that, that is important because it will help you um, better, like it will help you to invest in Africa in a meaningful way. Not all our brothers and sisters have to return to the motherland to help restore her. But we mm -hmm. need to all be in a place where if we're not all here physically, we must be here emotionally. And then what we do from abroad, that can all add to the build. So it's um, keep tuning in to the Diaspora channel. Um, thank you for having us, Sister Kai. And uh, um, yeah, hopefully Bye. I'll see you again at some point. 
very soon, Sister Na. Thanks so much for joining us, Brother Muzu. Thanks so much for joining us tonight and sharing what you are doing to be part of the change we are all looking for. So really, really appreciate what you guys are doing over there in Ghana. Keep up with the great work. And I will see you all very soon because now we'll be coming back to share more about other projects, you know, she's working on in Ghana. So we all need to learn before we actually go to Africa, especially if you want to go to Ghana, tune in and learn more from now. So uh, guys, like I said in the beginning, it's all about supporting our businesses, patronizing our businesses. So don't forget to check Maison Moka. This bracelet right here is in store right now. Check it out and all other project, uh, pr products over there on the site is all for you guys. And then you know for sure 100% you are supporting a black owned business. So I will see you all very, very soon. And please don't forget to share this live and subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel. And I'll see you all soon. Good night. Good night.